This episode of Dewan Tomislav is brought to you by Signature Styles, located on 1034 North 13th Street, brings you the best service for all of your beauty needs, from hair, to nails, and to makeup. Walk-ins are welcome, but appointments are recommended. So make sure you call in at 270-575-4581 to book your appointment now. Hello everybody, it's Dewan Thomas here and I want to welcome you to the first episode of Dewan Thomas Live. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be hosting my own talk show. This has been a long time in the making. Um, I'm excited. We have a great guest scheduled for us today. I can't wait to get into that conversation. Um, but before that, I just want to jump on here and you know, I'm, I'm going to be doing Monday motivations every week. Um, but I just wanted to start it on this first episode by giving y'all a little motivation today. So with me hosting and creating my own show, it's kind of a living testimony of you being able to do whatever you put your heart and mind to. And that's something that I always preach about is just putting your heart and mind to whatever you want to do and chase your dreams. But most importantly, keep God first and keep your faith in mind and all the things you do. But looking at what I'm doing and looking back over my life, I'm just grateful for always pushing through because... You know, there was times where I was discouraged or people may have tried to hate on whatever I had going on and all these different kind of circumstances. But at the end of the day, I ignored all that and honestly used the hate as fuel to keep pushing on. And here we are now at my own talk show, my own talk show. Like I get to say I have my own talk show produced in my own studio with an amazing team. My creative director, Jalen Harris, so grateful for him and all his help. And all the people that I've had on my show that we got scheduled, and I, I can't spoil some of the guests, but it's just amazing. And, you know, all of you out there that are watching this, just believe in yourself, first and foremost. Believe in yourself, even if family, friends, or anybody else doesn't support you or believe in you. As long as you believe in yourself, you can accomplish anything. Just look at it. <laughs> this is mine. So today, you know, this show is really kind of being geared towards like Jimmy Fallon. You know, I really look up to Jimmy Fallon and hey, maybe one day he'll be on my show uh, or vice versa. I'll, I'll come on to your show, Jimmy. But what I want to do is I want to start out with a, a short monologue, just talking about some of the things happening here in our area and then just move on to my guest and end out the show with a musical artist. So that's really what we have scheduled for you today. Um, so first, I do want to start off with some local news. Um, here recently, we've been seeing the Paducah Police Department post about their officers receiving lifetime or life-saving achievement awards, which that's amazing. And I'm grateful. You know, I talked with the chief of police over the summer. We, when I was running for mayor, we were talking about in the unity meetings, getting the officers more out there so the community can be the community can be more familiar with who's protecting and serving our streets. So and they're now starting to post a lot of stuff and some of the good things that they're doing because. In the media last year, we saw a lot of bad stuff. You know, there's a lot of controversy going on in America with police and everything. But I got to applaud the Paducah police because they've always been great people. And, you know, there's always that one bad apple in a bunch. But in, in whole, the Paducah police and the sheriff's department, they've been really good to our community. And I'm grateful for them for be uh, for posting some of these, um, you know, awards for these officers that are doing some great stuff in our community. And then moving on to some more controversial news that we've seen here in Paducah. It's, it's kind of crazy. It's really sad, to be honest. Um, many of y'all have already seen it. Some of the students at McCracken and Marshall, you know, it's thrown around which school, but McCracken for sure, have been using the N-word. And, you know, I don't really want to ponder on, you know, the negativity in this episode, but just I want to save that for Dewan, uh, for Paducah news. We'll, we'll be coming out with a Paducah news about this soon, but... It's sad, and you know, this really just boils down to a lot of the stuff that happened at Paducah with the blackface controversy and the slaps on the wrist there and here, and all, all this and that. But, it, you know, I think with this case, with these students, these young kids, they're kids, they're basically kids using the N-word and just joking about it because a TikTok went viral um, of somebody exposing one of their friends, you know, saying the N-word, and that's where this whole debacle came from is these kids wanting to defend the person that said the N-word. It's, it's a mess. Like, how are you? You can't defend somebody for using a racial slur. It doesn't matter if it's the N word or any other racial slur. Like, why? What? what it's, it doesn't make any sense to try to defend somebody that's obviously in the wrong. So, to the kids out there, you know, if, if y'all see this, like, it, cut it out. You know, you're you're young and you have room to improve and educate. And you know, a lot of this stuff probably comes down to the parents too. If your parents aren't teaching the right things, you know, to the parents. 
you got to teach your kids the right things, especially with the climate of America right now. We need more unity. We don't need to go back to all this hate and racial prejudice and all this ignorance. That's what it is. It's, it's strictly ignorance. So to the parents of these kids, get a grip now. Get a grip because we need to be coming together. Black, white, Asian, Hispanic, it doesn't matter. We're all one race and that's the human race. So cut it out. Let's get a grip, and we'll talk more about that on du on Paducah News. It's, it's so different now that I got two shows that I'm like, oh, Dewan Thomas Live, Paducah News. Ah, it's, it's fun. But now we're going to be moving on to our mid-sponsor. I'm grateful for our sponsors. You know, we had our sponsor that started off the episode, and now we're going to have our mid-sponsor, which is the Boys and Girls Club. Um, we have a great partnership with them. I'm going to be doing a lot more with them here in the future. So we're going to give it over to them, and then we'll be coming back with our special guest. See what we're going to keep doing. All right, so I want to welcome my first guest to the show, none other than the one, the only, Miss Julia Watkins. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. It's a pleasure to see you. It's always great seeing you. So I guess my first question for you is, where did you get your start in music? Well, first of all, I would like to thank you for having me. It is a pleasure to be here. Where did I get my start in music? In Vero Beach, Florida. I was five years old, and I was listening to the radio with my mother in the kitchen. My mom always listened to classical radio, so um, I heard the violin uh, as it was like a violin solo uh, playing with the orchestra, and I told my mom, what a beautiful instrument, I want to play that. So she immediately signed me up for lessons, got me a violin. Um, I was almost six, so pretty much around my sixth birthday I started playing, um, all because I was inspired from the radio. Now I know you said you got your start in like classical music, so... Uh. How was that? Now, you don't do classical now, so where did you get your beginning in classical to where you're at now? Okay, so when you play a classical instrument like the violin, viola, cello, the traditional path is to learn um, classical uh, repertoire and to learn how like, have a classical education. And in my opinion, that is the best start and the best foundation. Um, it's just the traditional, it's just the route that usually everyone takes. And it's kind of, in my opinion, it's necessary in order to have all the skill set that you need in order to play any other genre. Of course, the only exception to that would be fiddle. A lot of people don't necessarily have a classical background for fiddle and do great. But for what I'm doing, in order to get around the violin like I like to, I'm really thankful for my classical background. Definitely. And you've been pretty open about like some of the criticism that you face being in Kentucky, you know, a, a fiddle state, <laughs> but you're, you know, you're going against the grind being, you know, a female not playing fiddle. And I, I know you've talked about it before. So how do you like face that criticism and keep pushing on. Okay, so yeah, that's been a little bit challenging. Um, one time I was playing at a local restaurant and a, and a man confronted me after my show and said, you know, you will never make it unless you play fiddle. And, um, you know, that kind of, you know, kind of got under my skin, but I've learned to just, you know, just not take it personal. And um, one a wise older lady told me, she said, you know, when you get criticism, all you really have to say is, you know, you may be right and walk away, because right. maybe he's right. I'm, But I will definitely make it my mission to prove him wrong. <laughs> and like, moving into what you do, you do a lot of pop, you do a lot of hip hop and stuff. What led you to that you know, genre of music? Okay, so I was classically trained, right? And I played in orchestras and symphonies all the way growing up. Um, and then when I went to college, I majored in violin performance, classical, graduated, started playing in professional symphonies, ended up at the Paducah Symphony, which is you know here in Paducah. And um, I got really burnt out with the classical world. Um, it's really hard to make it very far in the classical world. It's just so incredibly competitive, and there's so many amazing classical violinists just a billion times better than me when it comes to their skills, and they're just, oh my goodness, they're so good. So I was never motivated enough to try to be that good, you know, as far as, like, um, in the classical world. So um, I kind of got bored. I kind of got... Uh, not. I, uninterested and so I quit music actually completely um, I went back to school and got a master's of business a master's in business MBA and you know try to go a different route career-wise and but that kind of didn't work for me and I was still not really feeling like I was in line with my purpose so after a lot of you know figuring things out I um I picked my violin back up because I saw I was watching America's Got Talent and I saw um, a young man playing electric violin and he was doing the hip hop and the pop and I was like well wow that looks like really like that looks like fun I would love to be able to um, kind of play music like that so that's how I got he inspired me to not only pick my violin back up but also to do it styles that I like so 
I, I love doing alternative rock. I love doing throwbacks because I grew up in the 90s. I love, you know, just basically any genre that I'm like feeling on that day, um, that's what I'm playing. <laughs> and you spoke about America's Got Talent. Now you've auditioned for the show and that's actually how we met for all of y'all out there. We, it, It's kind of crazy. It is crazy. Because I was working for America's Got Talent and I saw her in the crowd. I was doing working with the film crew and we were looking for people like to bring on the show and stuff like that, do some behind the scenes stuff. The show was filmed crazy, but I saw you in your, I don't remember, was a sequence? It was like a sparkly, sparkly. And the violin was <laughs> sparkly just like her and yeah. I was like oh my gosh we need her so I got her and did not know nothing about her until the next day when we met uh, we were y'all were filming we were doing like, a reality filming the yeah, next day so on the bridge you, yeah, yeah, in yeah. Louisville and she actually showed up on the show in that walking scene from there yes so that's awesome that's yeah right there. and <laughs> That's when we discovered that we were both from Paducah. Right, small world. It, it is a super small world, like all the way in Louisville, fil filming for a, a America's TV Got show, Talent, right? yeah. And we find out we're from the same city. And you went to school with my brother. And yeah, it's, yeah. It's crazy. And now we've been friends ever since. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's just amazing. So it is amazing. America's Got Talent, what was your time like, you know, auditioning for that show and like, what, what was that all like for you? Oh my goodness. Okay, I credit America's Got Talent so much. Even if I never actually make it to LA to the live competitive auditions, I am so thankful and grateful for America's Got Talent because they are the reason I picked my violin back up. And I've auditioned three times now, and each time I've auditioned, it's pushed me to the next level because I've had to like become this woman that you know I want to be. And so the, it was the motivation to get me to that level in order to present myself the way I wanted to in the audition. So the the audition was was the. Originally, my goal was to get onto America's Got Talent and be in front of the celebrity judges. But c over time, it kind of, it just turned into something else. And it's just been my motivation to um, become the, the musician, the entertainer that I want to be, regardless of the outcome. Definitely, definitely. And so what, what is some of the takeaways that you got from the show, like some of the things you learned from going on to the show? Well, since I didn't actually make it to the live auditions in L.A., um, just... The experience of uh, being filmed, the experience of auditioning, the experience of that pressure and competitiveness, I love it. I love all of it. I absolutely love it. And um, it just inspires me and shows me what I'm capable of. So it's just, you know, it's basically been a huge inspiration to me, the whole process. Definitely. So moving on to kind of 2020 and the start of the pandemic, uh -huh. you made a Facebook post asking like all your friends, like, when do y'all think this is going to end? And I think you said May or other people said Yeah, May, we were like trying to yeah, speculate. We were trying to speculate the time frame. So how has COVID, and it's still here, you know, and it's still right. stuff is closed down. So how has that affected you as a musical artist and a performing artist? Okay, so, you know, I told you I picked my violin back up after watching America's Got Talent. I started playing, um, I started performing a little bit, but I didn't really start my music career I, and quit my day job and start everything until February of 2020. So I played two live shows. It was great success in, in my view. I thought they went great in the fact that I had a blast and all, the audience had a blast and it was packed and everyone came out to support, which was so amazing. I played two shows and then COVID, everything shut down. So for me, I had just started my career and I had quit everything and put all my eggs in this basket. And then, okay, now what? So it was devastating. You know, it's been devastating for so many people. A lot of people, we're able to continue to work, but for someone like myself, we had to figure out, okay, now what? How do I pay my bills? So it's been a struggle. Definitely. And what about here today, you know, almost a year later, like how has it been for you? Is it getting better? Is it getting easier? Um, it's still, you know, it's still a struggle. What I ended up doing um, was just, you know, showing up uh, places and playing for free because no one could afford to pay me during COVID. So for example, I played out in front of a pizza place and I, got, I would play for a gift card, which was great. They were very generous to give me a gift card and also play for tips. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of entertainers refuse to do that. You know, oh, well, I have to make a certain amount of money when I perform. But for me, I love performing. I don't care to do it for free. I would, I would want to do it all the time. But I do have to make a living. So for me, that worked out. I was playing for tips. It wasn't, you know, great money, but made it work. And that's kind of what I've still been doing. Of course, I did start street performing, which is always for tips. So yeah. that's kind of the life I've been going the path I've been going down lately. Definitely. And I like what you said about, you know, you didn't care about not making money. That's something I've always said. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I always want to do something in my life. I don't care if I'm not getting paid for it. As long as I love it and I'm enjoying it, that's right. all that matters. Because I'm not about to work a nine to five making money for somebody else and me hating my life. No. You know, that's, that's, that's terrible. So. I feel like you can work with any budget. I mean, yeah. I would rather follow my passion rather than a paycheck. Yeah. 
And even if I was following a paycheck, I would just end up spending it. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, like, if I'm making less money, then I'm spending less money. If yeah. you make more money, you're spending more money. It all evens out, and I would rather be happy, you know, doing what I love. Definitely, and that's a great thing. And you spoke of street performing. Now, we actually came down to Alabama. Yes. And it was we so filmed, fun. It, it was. It was amazing. <laughs> we filmed a mini documentary with Julia, and y'all can go watch it right now on my YouTube channel, Dewan Thomas. So let, let's check it out real quick. Hello! Hey. Hi! Good. Good to see you. Welcome to the camper. <laughs> um, traveling and living on the road is the lifestyle for me. I love it. It's really fun. All right, so Julia, that was an amazing time down there, and we talked about a lot of stuff in that mm -hmm. mini little documentary. So, you know, in whole, what has it been like being a street performer? What has that been like for you? It's been, oh, are there even words? Oh my gosh, just, ah, oh, it's been so fun. Like, what comes to my mind is just like stars and like sparkles and just all the good words. And <laughs> <laughs> I've had an absolute blast every time I go out. I meet so many cool people and personalities and I get I get so much energy. I get so much energy from it. Like I have all these beautiful people that I come across and they're just you know, we're like exchanging energy. They're getting energy from my music and I'm getting energy from their happiness and listening and it's just Ah, oh, it makes me so excited. <laughs> I loved it. You know, my goal is to perform on stages and to tour via stages, um, you know, like traditional. But um, in the meantime, street performing has been great. That's good. That's yeah. good. And, you know, you go by persona. You got your own brand, which is the Blonde Violin Girl. Yes. So how did you come up with that and how did you transition to that? Right. So that's kind of been a recent thing. Um, I was talking to somebody in Nashville, a producer. And I was kind of picking his brain, and he said, you know, no one knows Julia Watkins right now. You're like a no, you know, you, nobody knows you. I'm like, you're right. He's like, you need to find something that's more catchy that people can remember, and they can go online and easily remember. So I was like, well, people in Paducah, they already call me Violin Girl. Like, that's how people know me, Violin Girl. And I'm like super, super blonde. I'm not just talking about hair color. Like, personality. I have embraced it. I'm blonde. I'm okay with it. I'm not, a, I'm not just okay with it. I'm, like, happy to be myself. And it's funny. Like, I laugh at myself all the time. And so I was like, well, violin girl, blonde, blonde, violin, there we go, <laughs> blonde violin girl. <laughs> it just manifested itself with your whole Yes, being. <laughs> and actually I have to say this too. My name, Julia, means youthful and fair-haired. Oh, so right. it's literally my name, wow. just in a catchy way. <laughs> definitely are that. I try to live up to it, right? <laughs> so... Um, so what is next for you? Like, do you have any upcoming music, any debut albums? What, what is next for the Blonde Violin Girl? Okay, so there's a couple things. Um, I am working on my first album, and I'm working with the, a local producer who's fantastic. And, you know, that's it's a slow process. It takes time. But um, every time I release a single, I'm going to try to release a music video. So this next single that I'll release, which will be my second one ever, ever created, um, we'll go on to Spotify, and, it'll, and then I'll also have a music video to go along with it on my YouTube channel, Blonde Violin Girl. So um, that's like, you know, uh, the album will probably be about 10 songs. So that's going to be one at a time, releasing them one at a time. And then the second um, goal for me right now is um, I really want to continue street performing and branching out. And I think I want to go to Florida next because it's still winter and... I've been trying to street perform in the cold. Uh, the other day I was playing downtown Paducah in 43 degree weather and I was able to do it for two hours, but then I, I was in so much pain. My fingers were so cold. I was like, okay, you know what? I really need to go down south. I need to keep making my way down south, um, which it's difficult to juggle um, everything in my life and motherhood and not being gone for too long so that I'm there, here for my kids. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how to how to do that and make a living and you know become the 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 performer that I want to be while still juggling everything. Definitely. And one of my final questions for you is, what advice can you give to you know aspiring artists or people that are you know kind of going on the same path as you? What what advice can you give to them? Okay, so the advice I would give is start if you haven't already, and if you have started, keep going one baby step at a time. That's that's all it takes. I know I'm going to get to where I want to be eventually. And I'm already playing music for a living. And so to me, I'm already successful because I'm already doing what I love and getting paid for it. <laughs> oh, great. 
So we want to thank Julie for coming on to the show. Now, actually, you're not done here. You're actually about to do give us a performance. So let's transition <laughs> over to that. It's going to be the blonde violin girl playing for us live Yay. here at the one. <laughs> So, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, mm -hmm. all of those are Blonde Violin Girl. Definitely. So. And then Spotify is Julia Watkins. Julia Watkins. So make sure you go follow her. We want to thank her for coming on to the show. It was an amazing time. I'm grateful. Thank that. you so much for having me. Yeah, it's so fun. <laughs> amazing violin player. Amazing oh, person. Make thank sure you. you. Check out her stuff. She's amazing. <laughs> so thank you for coming on the thank show. Thank you. This has been Dewan Thomas Live. So we want to thank our sponsors for season one of Dewan Thomas Live. We want to thank Signature Styles, the Oscar Cross Boys and Girls Club, Tevin Meredith of Remax Realty Group, DJ Karuk, House of Hope Ministries, Big Mike's Barbershop at Makia's Place, Authentic Black Widow Jewelry, The Dariette Plus, Rosia's Event Planning, and last but not least, Red's Donuts, the best donuts in town.